Washington. And uh, we'll welcome you back to Straight Talk Africa here in Washington, D.C. I'm joined by uh, Professor Suleiman Young of Howard University and Morrison Rokakamba, Merit Scholar and Fellow at the Harvard University. Also via Skype, Moses Hisa, a columnist with the Uganda Observer and a PhD candidate at Northwestern University. Moses, let me turn to you yeah. uh, via Skype first and give me your thoughts on, on what is going on. You've had a little bit of what's going on on the social media what do we expect tomorrow after the, the voters go to the polls hi Esther and um, good evening to all the viewers across the continent um, it's a um, tense time in the country Uganda right now as we go into the polls tomorrow uh, there is high anticipation um, there is a heightened sense of desperation across the political divide. Uh, what I gather from the ground is that uh, the uh, leading opposition candidate, Dr. Kiza Vesije, has been able to rally the population for change. And this has generated a lot of uh, paranoia and uh, desperation on the part of the incumbent president, Yoel Museveni. Mm -hmm. and, and the state machinery is quite on the tenterhooks. We've had some rather, um, um, you know, uh, scary statements coming from uh, the head of the police, the Inspector General of Police, who recently made rather um, uncalled for statements. Uh, the, you know, all this has added to a, a charged and poisoned mood, and, and, and it's not very clear what will happen after the polls are cast tomorrow. Uh, but we wait and see. Part of the problem, you know, comes with having a leader that has stayed in power for too long, such that the stakes become so high. Uh, you know, him leaving power is a matter of life and death. And, and those who are struggling to wrestle power from him are also doing it with a lot of enthusiasm. We have had very, very charged uh, crowds following Dr. Kiza Besige and, and showing that the country is desperate for change. Uh, they, they, they can't just stand anymore the rule of General Museveni, which, as we know, has become rather corrupt and rotten and, 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 and regressive in many ways, Esther. I think perhaps I should just turn to Morrison Rokakamba here in the studio. Morrison, what's your reaction to yeah, Moses' yeah. views on, on yes, what's right. expected tomorrow and mm. some of the comments he's made? Yes. And I think, thank you, comments, first yeah. of all, Esther, for hosting me. Mm -hmm. And glad to be here with uh, Professor Young yeah. yeah. and uh, listening to uh, Moses Kisa, who is a, a colleague um, who writes for the Observer back in Uganda. Well, first of all, um, this is a historic moment that we are hosting yet again as a country uh, an election in a multi party democracy back home in Uganda. And, uh, the, the two contest the contestation that is happening, you know, between the NRM, between the FDC, and, and other actors, including uh, Chad Gia, who is, you know, a leader standing for president, yes. that variety shows that Uganda, in a way, has moved further to, you know, entrench and deepen democratic practice, practices. So all these disagreements and, and engagements, for me, and the ferment of information and, and the discussion that are going on, shows me that as a country, in spite of disagreements, we are moving further to be able to elect our leaders. About uh, this perceived, you know, uh, that NRM is unpopular, that President Museveni, because he has been in power for quite a number of years, is unpopular, is not necessarily based on evidence. What we need to know is that actually NRM is a mass party. The National Resistance Movement, it's a mass party, and it runs retail politics, house to house, and most of, you know, from urban areas, from trading centers up to rural areas, and its major base is where people are, the communities, and, uh, and it is really extremely very strong. All these other parties, you know, like the FDC and others, are essentially, first of all, urbanites, based in urban areas, that's their strong base, and trading centers. And once you go down there into the villages, into the rural, they absolutely have no support, and that's so, why, Morris, by the way, uh, Esther, let's get, we have consistently... Yes, we'll give you yeah, more chance to sure. talk about this. Uh, yeah. Professor Nyang, let me turn to you, because you heard what Moses said uh, via Skype and also uh, Morrison here in the studio, before we go to my colleague Shaka in Kampala. What's your reaction? Because tensions are high, the stakes are high, uh, and you followed Uganda's politics for years. What do you expect? What's your view? Well, I think there are comparative 
elections across Africa. I think what is happening in Uganda now is very much like what happened in Senegal during the time of Abdul Juf. When you have the opposition groups were so mobilized, the case in Uganda is whether the opposition groups will work together against President Museveni. If they go on their separate way, then Museveni might win the election because they didn't come together like they did in Senegal. In Senegal, that's why the Senegalese example is very primary. Then you go back to Liberia. The lady candidate bring back the experiences of the president of Liberia today because you see you have a woman running for the presidency and she won against the men after a difficult time. So I think the Senegalese model with Abdijouf could happen in Uganda, but it depends on two things, in my opinion. If President Museveni is convinced that his people are not happy with him, and then the political opposition must give him the exit without any kind of recrimination and conflict in the country, like the opposition did to Abdijouf in Senegal. Are the opposition leadership ready for that kind of exit? If that didn't happen, and they're not so organized, then based on the analysis I'm hearing, that the rural people support him, but the urban people don't like him. And the urban people are most affected by misrule than by the rural people.